good morning in today's video i want to take up a very important question and discuss it give the answer and the question is 3 years ago why did china do april 2020 april 2020 refers to the multi prong deep incursions done by the pla in eastern ladakh where according to media reports they came to occupy and still occupy 2000 square kilometers of indian territory which is huge and this question has baffled everybody all our analysts and policy makers including the external affairs minister jay shankar who is at its wits end to understand this is precisely what he said when he was talking to the media uh on the conclusion of 9 years of modi government that why is it that the chinese they dumped two agreements peace agreements and he was referring to the 1993 and the 1996 peace agreements for peace on the line of actual control why they dumped the agreements and did april 2020 all right then here is the answer to that why they did it and jay shankar i'm sure is aware of the answer So it all started on the 5th of August 2019 when India's Union Home Minister he announced in parliament the revocation of article 370 and 35A in Jammu and Kashmir. He also said that the state of Jammu and Kashmir will be bifurcated in two union territories union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and union territory of Ladakh. Pakistan occupied Kashmir will be shown in the union territory of Jammu and Kashmir and Akshay Chin will be shown in the union territory of Ladakh Within hours of he making the announcement the Chinese rejected India's statement The Chinese said that Ladakh becoming a union territory was completely unacceptable to them and the reason was very simple and it was the correct reason what they said was their analyst that there never was a border between xinjiang and ladakh it was always a open border so by creating a union territory of ladakh you will show a border on the map let it not be on the ground and that is unacceptable to us what they called cartographic aggression not acceptable to china so on the 11th of august i repeat 11th of august external affairs minister jay shankar traveled to beijing had a meeting with his counterpart wang yi to explain to him that what india has done in kashmir is india's internal matter and creating a map and showing ladakh as a union territory on the map will not jeopardize will not change any reality on the ground both for the on the line of actual control and the line of uh, control with pakistan wong he rejected it that we do not accept this making of a new map and showing ladakh as a union territory so jay shankar came back having not got any results what did the chinese do they did not do any coercion or aggression at that time no they looked for the opportunity to have a dialogue at the highest level and that opportunity they knew was the second informal summit now the second informal summit flows from the first informal summit which was held in april 2018 in wuhan in china between Chinese president Xi Jinping and Indian prime minister Narendra Modi When we say informal summit we are talking of a unstructured dialogue where the two leaders can talk freely and discuss bilateral and regional and global issues And it was agreed there in Wuhan that every year the two countries will have this informal summit alternatively once in China and once in India So in 2019 it was India's turn to host the second informal summit and that is what the Chinese started pressing India for 
Indians were reluctant. Perhaps because the Indian Prime Minister did not want to meet Xi Jinping after the revocation of Article 370 in Kashmir. But the Chinese side put a lot of pressure and they said we need to do this, the dialogue. Finally, the dates suggested or rather given by the Indian side were 11th and 12th October 2019, knowing fully well that October was the month where the Indian Army was doing a planned exercise called Him Vijay in Arunachal Pradesh. Exercise in two phases which was spread across the entire month of October. It was being done in Arunachal Pradesh which Chinese claim as their territory. So perhaps the thinking on the Indian side is that the Chinese will take umbrage at the fact and perhaps their president will not travel to India because the Indians were doing a military exercise in Arunachal Pradesh, the disputed area. But Chinese were so determined that they did the extraordinary. The Chinese ambassador in India told the media when the exercise was going on that this is not a reality, this is not a fact. So here was the Chinese ambassador denying that an exercise was going on. This was the determination of Xi Jinping to meet up with Modi. And he finally came. The second informal summit happened in Chennai. At the end of the summit on the 12th October 2019, the readout of the MEA said that 370 was not discussed between the leaders, Kashmir was not discussed and only thing which was discussed was the bilateral trade and of course the need to continue with the informal summits between them. Good Lord, imagine Xi Jinping determined Xi Jinping wanting to meet Modi to discuss bilateral trade and he is travelling all the way for that but so be it. Wang He, who was present throughout the second informal meeting on the way back, he had a different story to tell to his media which got reported here in the Hindu newspaper. He said that the key message that Xi Jinping gave to Modi was, we should both want peace in the region. There should be peace between India and Pakistan. There should be peace between India and China. And there should be peace between Pakistan and China, which this key message was completely uh, bypassed. It was ignored by the Indian readout. When nothing was coming out, then at the opportune time, the Chinese did April 2020. So what does this mean? That the Chinese, because India did cartographic aggression according to them, they changed the reality on the ground. What the Indians did on the map, they did on the ground, they moved their forces close to their 1959 claim line occupying as the media say something like 2000 square kilometers and this was the reason why the Chinese did what they did. Having answered this question, there are two additional points that I would like to talk about. Now you see lot of our diplomats, retired diplomats, senior analysts, they give so many reasons of why China did April 2020. Amongst them, one of the key reasons is that look, the Chinese were worried about the infrastructure building under the Modi government and special attention is given to, uh, you know, this uh, road, uh, which is a 225 kilometer road, Darbuk, Sheok, Dolat Beg, Oldi, subsector north, which has been troubling the Chinese side. No, not at all. In fact, anybody who understands the war which will be fought between PLA and the Indian military will honestly have very little to do with the land forces and the infrastructure. But that besides, if indeed this was true, that the infrastructure and especially this road was troubling the Chinese, what was the need for Xi Jinping, a determined Xi Jinping insisting to meet a reluctant Modi for the second informal summit. He could have ordered April 2020 much earlier without coming to India. So this was not the reason. Another point is, which I think is very important. The other point is, why was the PLA so confident 
that if they come to sit on 2000 square kilometers of indian territory the indian side will do nothing i mean after all between india and pakistan if there is any problem on the line of actual control they fight it out for even a small post and 2000 square kilometers is a hell of a lot of territory so i think here in my assessment the pla had got a proper briefing a deep briefing from the pakistan military on the 2016 so called surgical strike and the 2019 balakot air attack and they were convinced that the indian military will not do anything and they were right so what the uh, pakistanis would have told them that okay let's see this 2016 so called surgical strikes now the surgical strike that it was a surgical strike first of all you don't do it against terrorist camp there is nothing called a surgical strike this word was given out or coined rather by india's dgmo director general military operation general ranbir singh in the press conference he said we've done a surgical strike whereas the then foreign secretary jay shankar who's now the minister he told the external affairs committee of the parliament that what happened in september 2016 were accurate low level counter terror operations on the other side of the line of control and what was unique about these was that the political leadership took ownership of it and as far as the pakistan army was concerned they denied it never happened and was when ranbir singh talks of surgical strike i mean when you do a surgical strike you don't tell it a media conference that we have already informed the pakistanis last night that look our mission is over we are not doing anything further that means you are worried that they should not retaliate now let's go to the balakot what happened on balakot balakot the indian military did action in balakot first of all we do we don't have a damage assessment report it was never shared with anybody what actually they did on the night of uh, 20 uh, 26 february 2019 but what we know is that on 27th in broad daylight the pakistan air force did operation swift retort and we know that the indian air force conceded publicly that this was an act of war but did nothing about it therefore when the military leadership agrees to use military power not against a national objective but against the objective which helps the ruling party i don't have to spell out what it means i don't have to spell out how much that military will fight so this is in my assessment what would have been told explained by the pakistan military to the pla and they were absolutely confident that taking 2000 square kilometers will be in the gray zone operation zone below the level of war and that is precisely what it was thank you so much